Okay, let's get started. Um, my name is Andrea Mitchell. Um, this is Monday Masterclass. And what this has um, been, uh, this was a great idea that uh, Becky Page and Ellen Ford um, came up with, golly, a year and a half ago. And um, the great idea was that we would be able to learn from other people's stories, from top leaders in our company, their stories on how they got started, um, kind of things as we went um, along. And then uh, you know, things that they're learning now, things are still in the middle of learning. The great thing about the leaders in our company and especially the ones that we've had on is they are still in the in the process of learning and leading um, from the front. So today uh, you are going to get to hear from Julia Carti, um, who has not only risen to the very top of our company, but has done, has hit all the milestones along the way um, but done it with such um, grace and humility and being willing to be vulnerable on like the things that she's like, I, I did this wrong, or I wish I had done this differently. And I just think that is so encouraging for all of us. And um, Julia and I have been friends since about six months before, I think I, a year before I started Plexus. And um, one of the things that she told me right around the time that she decided, we'll get into that, but right around the time that she told me that uh, she said, if you can do this, I can do this. And I want y'all to hear that this entire time. If, if, if whoever your sponsor is can do it, if Julia can do it, if Andrea can do it, if Becky can do it, you have the ability to do it. We are not all the same. We don't all have the same, um, skill sets. Um, I would say Becky and I have actually more similar skill sets than Julia, although then Julia and I have similar skill sets from Becky. So we all really are different. Um, and what we bring to the table. And I want you to figure out what do you bring to the table? So without further ado, uh, Jules, why don't you tell us um, when Plexus first, when you first even ever heard about Plexus, kind of your thoughts around it, um, kind of your situation that was going on in your family at the time and kind of where y'all were in life. You're muted. Sorry about that. Um, still. 10 years later, not unmuting myself. Uh, so back then it was what? It was 2014, I would think, about 2014. And like Andrea said, we had met in Sunday school. Um, my family was living in Dallas. And I just, you know, I think most of us, I would say most of us learn about it from scrolling, you know, Facebook or social media and you see someone post. And so I just, I didn't know what Plexus was, but I knew I didn't want to do anything to do with it because my only really um, experience with MLMs or network marketing was like parties, being invited to people's houses, spending money I didn't have on stuff I didn't really need. Um, and so I was like, oh, I'm not interested. And so I really, I, I would say Plexus, and I, I can say this because I think it's a great company. Roden and Fields was pretty big back then. It still is. It's, it's a solid company. Um, and there was one other one that a lot of my college friends were jumping into um, that I don't even know if it still exists, but um if you sold something, I just unfollowed you. And Andrea knows that. I just, I, it, it was nothing emotional. It was nothing personal to Andrea. I just was like, I, I, I don't, I'm not interested. So I mean, what was your actual financial situation at the time? Like for me, I opposite. I bought from everybody. So why did you decide to unfollow people if they were selling? I didn't have the money to buy from other people. <laughs> I was trying to be not spend money I didn't have. Um. So yeah. So financially, we were drowning. We were. We had gone to Texas primarily because we were trying to, in a roundabout way, get out of some financial, um, strength. Um and we weren't making ends meet as it was. Um, I will say this, and Andrea didn't ask, but Andrea, I just remember her, her she had told me about probiotic because my two youngest had eczema and I, A, had never heard the word probiotic. So I knew nothing about gut health or supplements. Um, and I always like to share this, like she thought she was going to sell me a product when really at night, what kept me awake at night was we couldn't pay our bills. So, um, I guess I, I would have thought you would have known that by seeing at me, but maybe you didn't. So, um, yeah, that goes back to the never assuming what everybody else has going on. Um, I, I would say that I, I probably was super unaware of what was going on. I thought, you know, and this, this goes for actually Becky and Julia, like whatever their financial situations were at the time, I had no idea. 
I wasn't sitting there going, oh, I wonder if, you know, they're paying back school loans. I wonder if, you know, the house that they're living in is, you know, how that financially is working out. Like I probably made assumptions that we are all making about our friends all around us right now. So um, you know, first thing, don't make assumptions. Second, okay, so you unfollowed me. So how did you even start other than knowing that what I that I sold something, how did you even for the next, what was it, six months, even really uh, hear about Plexus? Okay, y'all, this is really fun because I don't really go into the nitty gritty because I really, I actually went back on my Facebook to kind of jog my memory. Y'all, do you know, it really was, and I say this as you laugh, the bling bling swag they all wore to First Dallas. Like, because I wasn't seeing it on social media, different people would pop up. Amber Volbada, many of you might know, she was one of the pastor's wives at the church and she started posting. So different people, even though I had kind of unfollowed them, different people that I respected and I trusted started posting about it. So it was almost like third party validation. Um, and they did wear Plexus swag as I promise. I I feel like I I might be exaggerating. Like every time I saw them, I'm like, why why do they have a bedazzled plexus hat on today? Um, but they did. Um, so I say that with I think some of the and I don't want to get ahead of myself. I think some of the lies we tell not not only not assuming but. Also, sometimes I think we get living in those like scarcity or like we get scared when everybody around us starts selling. But really, you have influence over people that other people don't. The more people in your community that start sharing about it, actually, it gives it value. It kind of gives it that third. I mean, Amber Volvado, I mean, I, I didn't under, I didn't know her real well, but I didn't join under her. Uh, I think it was like Ness. I, I could probably name several from church that they really were part of my story, even though I didn't join up under them um, because I was closer to other friends. Um, And also, I mean, I think our swag these days are a lot classier. This says OG Gut Health Company. Um, I have two of them and I'm just going to put a plug in this. I get questions asked here in Florida every single time I wear this hat, every single time. It doesn't say Plexus, but it says Gut Health Company. So I think there's power in what, what, what are you representing at the gym and the grocery store? So, okay. So after I had given Julia countless bottles of ProBio 5 and just slipped them in her diaper bag and bottles of body cream because her sweet little Roman and Lottie had bleeding eczema. And I was like, please, for the love, if I can just supply you these things, I will just give them to you, which speaks volumes to how much I truly trusted the products. What actually like was the tipping point for you, Jules? It, it was really, well, okay. Angie Zumwalt is my sponsor. And she like crossed over. And like, I remember that. I'm like, oh no, like you, because we kind of had not, not made fun of it, but we were both like, we're never going to do that. And all of a sudden she's like, I got something to tell you I'm doing it. And I was like, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> but I, it, it was really going to lunch. I'm mean, not everybody. I'm going to pretend like y'all don't all know my story. Cause I feel like a lot of y'all are my team, but Andrea actually went Emerald and that Sunday she wore an Emerald dress and our we went our our families went to lunch together, and she was like, "I earned her car," and I was like, "Oh, okay, that's cool." And you can actually look at her emerald announcement. I'm cropped out of it, y'all. It meant nothing to me, and I sound like a cold, mean friend. I'm not. I I want to say this to you because your friends do not know most of them, unless they're very knowledgeable about network marketing, which they might be. Or they could be like me and just they don't know what emerald means. They they're like, "Oh, you earned her car." I have learned since joining Plexus, some companies, you earn the car really early, and then you're stuck with a car payment. Um, I don't know. How many friends do you have know about that and other? Like, our company is very different. You don't earn the car till later. We don't get stuck with car payments, which, praise Jesus. So, um, I went to lunch with her. We had decided to move. That now I guess we ate a lot together, Andrea, because all our stories either are, are eating places. We went, to, we skipped VBS and we went to breakfast. And I asked her, um, we were drowning still uh, more so than Jared had lost his job. And I was like, how much money are you making with this? And that's where that, that comment of you can do this. She told me, and were you Sapphire at that point? Not quite, almost. Not quite. But I was like, if you can make that much money, I can make a thousand dollars a month. And that's kind of how I thought about it. I was like, at my mindset, I know some people join and they're like, I'm going to go diamond. I I didn't even know what diamond meant. I just knew I needed $1,000 a month. And she, just her telling me her 
what paycheck built that belief in myself. And the fact that I told her she did not have to give up diet Coke. Oh we yeah. Really- yeah. She, cause she said, I just don't want it. Cause that's the thing. I think some people don't realize what does the, what does plexus mean? And people think, oh, this means I have to all eat healthy. I have to, you know, give up all of my, you know, food vices and all of my things. And I think I remember standing at the soda machine at La Madeline and she was like, I'm not giving up my diet Coke. And I was like, good. You don't have to, like, I, you, you never have to. She's like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah. I told her what my paycheck was. And I think, and I think just being vulnerable. And here's the thing, if you're thinking, well, my paycheck's on an emerald, almost sapphire paycheck right now. So someone's not going to be impressed. The thing that, that I read this article in newspaper this, this week and, um, about MLMs and our corporate keeps saying it, people need 300 to $500 a month to make some differences. So if you are, uh, if you are sitting there looking at, you know, your paycheck and going, it's not that impressive. Someone needs what you're currently making right now. Julia didn't need my numbers. I mean, eventually she made them very quickly, but at the time she was thinking, well, if you can make that, which is kind of stupid money, I need to make one twelfth of that. What if someone just needs to make a 10th of what you're making to just make ends meet? Um, so Jules Beck reminded me, tell us all that you were doing at the time to actually make money or all the things you'd done over the last few years at that point to make money and what you were going to have to do to make money if this didn't work out. Yeah. So I, I was, I'm really not that talented, but I just pretend to be. So at that point I had started a tutus business. Um, we, we joke at the family that it went bankrupt. Um, my mother-in-law is laughing right now. She's on here. Um, so yes, I made costume tutus for Halloween just to make ends meet one season. Um, my sister and I would buy clothes, like we, we had lots of kids, um, lots of clothes and like resell them. Um, like, you know, like we buy them in bulk and then we'd resell them to make money. Um, always Christmas pajamas. My sister had a monogram machine. So we, we tried that route. I say it's all the hobbies. I, uh, parties. I had a party planning business for one Saturday and realized I didn't really want to work on Saturdays, but I'm a really good party planner. So that, that I did have talent for, but I realized it was more hobby in all these things. And listen, I know on this call, even with just how many people are there, there's 24, there's somebody here that is crafting for finances. More power to you. Cause I want to buy your stuff. However, if you really have income, like it, it's a hobby. It, it, it's a hobby that you can make a little extra income. Um, and sometimes not even that. So um, I'm trying to think that I miss anything else I was doing. I feel like we resold everything. Um, it was no, all but- the time at stores, all that stuff. I want to hear, I want to hear what was the paycheck that the paycheck that you got that made you go, okay, like this is not Cause I think we all had that moment of like, Oh, this is cute. And then there was a paycheck that was like, Oh, hold up. So what was that for you? I think uh, the two. So there's the first one. I think a lot of people that have heard my story is I, my first paycheck. Um, I had bought the triplex, which I had bounced my checkbook. We moved to mobile with $36 to our name. I don't recommend. Um, Bought the triplex, gave the kids the probiotic, bio cleanse. I was drinking the pink drink because I wanted to be a person of my word. You know, I had to know, you know, I couldn't sell something I wasn't using. And I was standing in front of Publix. And I that's when you like, you got it, you know, you got like legit paychecks. And it was to the penny enough to cover my triplex and our first month's rent in Mobile. And that's the moment I knew that this really could change everything. I was like, oh my goodness, this could. Now you fast forward and I think, I guess I can say numbers on this call. Um, I just remember making $10,000 a month. And I thought, I remember calling Sarah Storm Purdue. She lives in Senegal right now. She's my best friend. She's a senior Ruby. Doesn't raise support because of Plexus. Yay. Um, But she, I said, if I can make $10,000 a month for six months, my life, like we're, we're, we're like, you know, debt-free everything. It would change everything. So I think those two paychecks right there, which are two totally different ones, one was less than a thousand and one was 10,000. Um, so those were my, my aha moments. And I made that paycheck for a lot longer than six months. A lot longer. Um, okay. So you, you decide to sign up because you're like, okay, if Andrea can make a thousand dollars, I can make a thousand dollars, which Honestly, I love that sentence because there was nothing. I mean, Julia knew me well enough at that point to be like, I mean, 
you're nice and all, but you're not that impressive. Like, it's not like you like have anything I don't have. Um, and then I think the second thing is she showed up at a meeting very early on. I think she and Angie showed up at a meeting that uh, Roz and Celeste did at La Madeline. So she was willing to be trained. How many days before you left for Mobile? It was like within like a week of you leaving for yeah. Mobile, wasn't it? Yeah, I was, it was only two weeks. So it's been two weeks. Can I pause you? Because I think it's important to see what you did to recruit me. So here's my, you can't control what your friend's doing, thinking. But I'll tell you what made, looking at it, this perspective, Andrea was still my friend. She still loved me. She still invited me on play dates. She went to breakfast with me. She did not just continue to post on social media in hopes maybe I would unfollow her one day. She didn't get her panties in a wad because her friend unfollowed her and didn't support her business. She just was like, I'm going to love her. She needs these products. So I, I just want to say, like, one of my biggest tips is just love people where they are. Love them where they are. They might join your team and they might not. Um, for, from experience, I've, I've moved several times. We're now living in Florida. I think this is like my fourth place, right? Since moving. Like, I have to keep that mentality. I just need to love people. If they join my team, good. If they don't, they, they'll just end up being a really good friend. Um, I think that's a lot easier said than done. I think that's where a lot of people drop the ball is they're so focused on like, I don't know, they're on the prowl for business builders and people can sense that. People can sense if you're only being their friend or you're only taking them to coffee um, to get them on your team. Another thing you did, sorry, Andrea, I'm taking over. Uh, you loved me well, but you also, um, you were vulnerable, but the, the, the business thing is Angie asked me to go to that training. I would have never, when I joined, said, here, let me go to a training. I didn't know who Celeste Gwynn was. I didn't, it meant nothing to me. I didn't know who Roz was, but Angie, and I, I remember my exact feelings. I was like, okay, I'm going to go to this meeting because I'm about to move to Alabama and I'll never go to another Plexus meeting. You know, like I'll just make her happy. And I went and I saw the training and, I, and that's kind of what, what another little bug of the business got put in me um, of just being that there were real, it was kind of like, a, again, it, it just, more people that showed me this was a real business and people were successful. So Angie, Ellen, myself, Roz and Celeste were all here, which are all your uplines. And you were in Mobile, brand new, had no team yet. Like you weren't, what was the catalyst from uh, you going, you getting to Mobile, being all by yourself with for, you know, young kids, getting them all, you know, loaded into school and Jared starting a new job and you actually catapulting a business for the next, um, I'll say six months, just because it felt like the next six months were the wild ride that actually was the plat the foundation for what you still have. So first of all, and I shared this on my team retreat last week, I talked to my sponsor every single day. There was not a day I, I would venture to say the first two years. And I know that might be scary for some of you, but that's the thing. She, I, I jumped into the business with two feet. I moved here, like I said, with no money. Yo, we didn't have internet. When Jared got home, I homeschooled those four kids. When he got home from work, I drove up to McAllister's up on government to use the internet just for the first, I mean, I'm not going to say it was forever, but for the beginning of it, because I needed this, like I, I had that, like I had to make this work. Um, it was also really fun, y'all. I don't want to take that out. Like it's contagious. Like I picked up the phone and people, most of y'all probably know my story. I, cause I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just doing what Andrea and Angie and them were telling me. Well, Andrea took me to breakfast and told me about our business. So it made sense to pick up the phone and call a friend and say, Hey, don't make fun of me. My friends back in Texas are making money. I'm not making money yet. At that point, I wasn't really making money. Um, I had made a thousand dollars yet. I said, but the products work. The kids skin starting to clear up come do this with me and that I just it again was relational which is really hard to teach sometimes but I always want to keep it on your forefront of your mind because that's how it worked I picked up the phone and asked people to do it with me and I still have friends who still don't do it with me um my mindset there first six months again um 
I did not have a local team. I was telling Andrea earlier, like, I don't know if I've ever really had a local team in town with me. Maybe what my little short stint in Tennessee, I had a, a couple of women that started working with me. I got to have coffee with them. But most of my business was via Zoom or call just the phone. Or we would get in our car and I did make sacrifices to drive two, three hours to go have coffees and dinners, a lot of dinners, a lot of dinners, um, because I think nothing replaces face to face building that belief in the business. So you joined right after I think all of us had gone to convention the very first time and then uh, nothing really came up company wise until leaders retreat. So what would you say? And, and we've actually never talked, and we've talked about leaders retreat, obviously, because we were together, but was there any vision cast at leaders retreat that you could see that it was bigger than just Angie and Ellen and I, and maybe Amber Volbin and a couple of other people like that, like what was getting to an event? What did that look like for you? Um, I really, it, and I feel like how many of y'all have been to retreat? I wish I could see all y'all. I said, how many of y'all been to retreat? Retreats, I mean, Plexus just does them right. So yes, I mean, I had never been to anything corporate and leaders retreat was definitely a huge thing. Um, that's where I met Becky and Niggle. Um, the first time I made, I made sideline friends. Um, there is power in this business for sideline friends, y'all. People who are not under you or above you. Um, there's just something, a special place for that. Um, it, it did. It gave me a taste, but I needed to say this. I, I vividly remember sitting on the bed and y'all have a terrible memory, but I do remember this. And Andrea had gone looking out the printed, uh, I guess, comp plan. If, if y'all remember, we need to bring them back. Okay. We need to just all join hands and bring back the stair step and trying to figure out what it meant to be gold because I had just turned gold because I had no idea. Like I didn't know. So I got to an event that built my belief and like I started asking questions and started becoming curious. So I say that is get your people to convention. Convention is just a bigger leaders retreat. Um, they don't have to earn it, but they'll start asking questions. They'll start kind of getting that bug of, of the culture. And then I, I have, you know, a thousand questions because we could talk about so many things, but how long did it take for you to find how many of y'all are, are waiting for your runner. You're waiting for that one person to join you to go, okay, now I have a business partner. I'm locking arms with this person and we're running. Julia, how long would it, would you say, and this is not discounting anybody on your team that you love and are your great, great customers or have built to gold or senior gold, but how long did it take for you to pick up the phone and keep calling people before somebody actually caught the vision of the business and wanted the like wanted to go all the way to the top of the business for themselves. Um, well, I have numbers because I have my VA look it up. So I have real numbers. Um, so I had, I've had four level jewels, level one jewels. Um, three of them are diamonds. So Lindsay Russell was my 43rd recruit. So she was my 43rd customer and she joined as a customer. She was one of my best friends in college. I had no idea she was interested in the business. I put her on my team page. That is why I will teach tonight. Um, if you're coming on my Monday night call, we're going to talk about our systems. Add them to your team page because she was nursing one night, saw something, made a post. I woke up the next morning. I was like, you posted. She caught the vision of the business by our community through our team page. Um, Rebecca Williams is another level one diamond of mine. She was actually my 42nd. She joined right before L Rob and she is a diamond again. Now, Andrea knows her. She grew up with my husband. We were Alpha Gams together. But she, I would have looked at her and thought, you do not need this money. She lives in Mountain Brook. Seems like they were doing really well. She wanted to redo her kitchen. She came, She met with me for breakfast. I was like, I need $50,000 to redo my kitchen. Eight years, nine years later, here she is, still a diamond. She's now retired from her Blue Cross Shield. So I'm kind of giving you just kind of how it works. I will tell you, she came to me. Because I was consistent. Okay, y'all. I was consistent on social media and keeping up relationships. 73rd recruit. I say recruit. You know, these things back then they were just customers, guys. They joined. They maybe they joined as ambassadors, but you know, they just wholesale customer. Was my good friend Rita. I'm still is my good friend Rita. Um, and again, she saw me at convention and literally texted me and said, she was she was a sorority sister. Right? She goes, Y'all look like y'all are having fun. I want in. Like literally, that's how it happened. So get to convention, get to leaders retreat, post those, be better than me on social media. I'm terrible now at events. 
because people are watching and some people just join for the community. She joined for the community. And then my fourth one was Brandy Walker, who we weren't even friends on Facebook, y'all. She followed me on Instagram. She's my, (laughs) she, she was, I always say my ex sister in law, sister in law. That's about the best way to say it. So we we were connected to my in laws, and she was my hundred and forty third, hundred and forty third customer. Now I am not saying you have to go recruit one hundred and fifty people to find your third diamond, but it is consistency. And I'll say before then, y'all, when I I have to say this at the beginning, when I say we didn't know what we're doing. If there's, you have this sweet spot of saying, come do this with me. I have a lot of rubies and senior rubies on my team who are just really good friends or just saw me back then and said, and we just, we shared. There was no question. It was not like, hey, do you want to work the business? It was just like, oh, you love your products. Here's your referral link, you know, grab some people. We just, everyone should be given that opportunity to build because you can go, I mean, I don't really recommend it, but you could, you could go emerald with a bunch of golds and rubies. Honestly, you don't have to wait for that one person that's going to skyrocket to diamond. So. Yeah. In fact, I would say if y'all don't know, one of our programs in the company is a star diamond program. I think it started two years ago. And so what it is, is when Julia says she has four, she at, at one time, um, and you know, life gets in, you know, life happens and gets in the way for people and, and, and they have to step out and, and the good thing is they'll still get a check, you know, as they're, as they're, you know, as their customers on their team still order, but, um, she had four jewels. So she had, um, all, uh, Lindsay, Rebecca, Rita, and Brandy all as jewels. And then they had their teams. That's what, when she's saying like, go get a bunch of golds and senior golds and rubies. What she's saying is. Cause you never know who's going to catch the vision at what point. And you want to make sure that you're not putting all of your, you know, not eggs in one basket. Cause you want to be able to pour into people, but you want to be able to pour wide. And one of the things that Julia has wisely done is that she's very wide. I'm not even sure you probably know how many, how wide you are in golds and above. Uh, because, and the thing is, is you shouldn't know because you have so many different teams at different levels. She works them, you know, she works with them all really well and not based on what rank they are, or, you know, or what their checks look like or anything like that. Um, okay. Feel free to ask any questions in the chat, but Jules, do you have any, uh, tips and tricks or tr- like things that you're like, I wish I had known. I wish someone had told me, I make sure everybody knows now kind of things. Probably my biggest, like when I look back at the beginning, because I was, I was excited, which I think you should be excited. And I think you should tell everybody and, and, you know, but I wish I had been more intentional because I see this happen a lot with my team. You do get that runner. You get that person who catches the vision early and you're hyper-focused. I wish I had not, I wish I had spread my focus a little bit more. Um, and, and helped other ones and, and realize success does not mean jewel success to your level one might be, and we do try to preach this, but I'm like, do we always believe it? Success might be making $500 a month. And, and with that, I think, and it's something we've implemented, um, in our team. And actually I'm working on it with my, my, um, I'm working on it today. I have a whole new system. Come ask me in like a month how it's going. But just knowing your people's goals and what success looks like for them. Because once they hit that success, it might, they're go- like, kind of like me and you, Andrea, like I, success to me was $1,000 a month. But once I hit $1,000 a month, we push the marker out further. But if you don't know, or if you just discount somebody, because they're like, they just want, they just want to lose 20 pounds. Like, and you don't give them time every month to talk to them about their health goals and make sure they're right on the right regimen. Well, they're never going to be a business builder because they're never going to hit their health goals because our products really aren't those that we can just sell and never speak to somebody. We're customer service. People ask me what I do. I do customer service and I'm a cheerleader. So I would ask you that, like, how are you cheering your, how do you cheer your team on if you don't know what their goals are? So, um, and of course we've had different seasons of what that looks like. Um, so yeah, from the beginning, I wish I had just known a little bit more and you don't know what you don't know. I wish I had just helped a few other people reach their next goal or what success looked like for them. Um, yeah. What are some key things that you look for in, um, business builders? Like if you're, if you, you're in a new community now, how long have y'all lived there now? Six months? 
like eight months. It's like <laughs> so you're in a fairly still new community. Uh and I know your community is a little um highbrow as compared to m- where most of us live. Um, but if you were looking for a new business builder, if you were talking to moms at the kids' schools, if you're talking to moms at dance or at tennis or whatever, what are some things that you think like after a, almost a decade, it'll be a, you know, 10 years this summer. What do you see are things that you're like, I can identify things that will work that people will succeed with. And I can identify some things that will be, a, that will create a struggle for people. What are some of those things that you've seen? So this is fun because I did the Saturday seeing a basketball game. Um, and you, I do have to be intentional. I'm not going into like, you know, a new situation thinking, would they be good on my team? Because you don't want to be that person, but we're natural, we're human. So as I looked around, I, I really, like I really reached over to Jerry. I was like, I need to get to know her. A, I liked her. That's the number one thing, y'all. I want to do this with women that I enjoy. I have, there has been years. I'm just going to say I've had seasons that I'm like, yeah. I want to do it with women who I enjoy, who have integrity. Okay. I, I feel like these are like Sunday school answers, but also because I think my story, a need, like identifying women that whether it's a new kitchen or to pay your bills, the need doesn't have to be, but just a, a reason to do it. Um, I also look for women who just personally at this point who are, are coachable and go-getters. You know, I don't want to have to drag anybody. Okay, if you're dragging your friends, girls, you're going to waste so much energy dragging them. And we love them. And I still love some of mine. And they know who they are, some of them, because I've been with them for 10 years. I'm like, I love you. I love that you love the products. I love that you make a little extra money, but I can no longer drag you because there's there's no will. So I'm finding those people. People that stay. Did you want me to say who I stay away from? Drama. Drama. Oh. Like if they're drama, like I, and that actually happened this week. I noticed in a, a, a mom chat, the one creating the drama kind of, I was like, yep, I will never recruit her. Like if she wants to be a customer, I'll send her a triplex. Okay. Um, nothing kills a team faster than drama. Um, negativity. Let's just, I mean, it's contagious. Um, I think that through this whole story, Andrea's excitement at church Like she didn't have to come and say, hey, Julia, can I talk to you about Plexus? I knew she was excited. I knew you, everybody knew Ellen Ford was excited. Like Ellen Ford was excited. Angie, like the excitement overflows. And if it's a genuine excitement, it's going to overflow in your social media. You're not going to have to copy and paste a testimony every day to say you work Plexus. You're going to be excited to be like, you know, making a story, mixing up your hydrate for your first day of reset today, you know, like it's genuine, like, because you're excited to do it. Um, I don't know where I was going with that is, is, is just, I mean, just contagious. You don't want negativity. That's what it was. Negativity, people who can't get excited over things probably aren't going to do well in this business. So. And then you are probably, I mean, Becky and I would say like the queen of uh, culture. Um, I could do strategy all day long, but in Julia's famous words, uh, culture eat strategy for lunch, but I would still feed you strategy for lunch. Cause that's, that's because that's, you know how we all, like, we could probably all say, what's the thing that I love about what we do here. And I love strategizing to the next level. Um, yeah, I don't know what Beck said, but based on what she started out with, Beck, Julia's really, yeah, she's also really good at strategy. I mean, hence the fact that she just came up with a new like game plan. But I, where do you feel like that, ha- like that being such a part of the of building culture, where has that, where has that grown your team? Where where do you feel like being intentional about culture has actually like increased your paycheck over the last ten years? I mean, I think it's the lifeline of our paycheck is the culture. Um, of course, we have our retreats, which I see some of y'all, y'all are here like last weekend. Okay, let's just say like we love retreats and it's not because we just love retreats. It's because we get together and we enjoy each other. We get to know each other. And again, I do love strategy, but the, the problem, if you only have strategy with no culture and all culture is, is relationships is is getting to know people getting to love people and I, I want to say this I thought about this because I knew you were going to ask this question I think being good at culture is knowing that you cannot be everybody's best friend not everyone's going to want to be your best friend 
I mean, I will say there, I'm, I'm certain there's people on my team that I might not be their cup of tea, but being strategic of finding them culture within your team. And that's what I love. I love, like, I mean, I even, you know, I, I, I'm like, I say I'm big brother to my team, but I see these little pockets of women who start having, like, I'm just going to use you, Kelly, because Kelly, I am Kelly's cup of tea. Good job. down there. Um, we love each other, but I love, she, she is great at creating little, little accountability groups. She has her little people. And then I'll see Miss Sue, Miss Sue is my mother-in-law. So she, I see she's made little friends over here, but creating a place for your team to find their people. Um, and I think that comes from, we, we do have weekly calls that we we kind of go back and forth. Like we're starting to be more intentional tonight, if y'all don't know. We're going to be more intentional tonight with some training, but also making sure there's a room for to for you to chat, to create chats. We have, from the beginning, y'all remember the old school, if you're not, I forget, some of y'all might not have been with us all 10 years, like dynamic duos, being strategic and having challenges every quarter to connect people. Um, the retreats at convention, I, my biggest probably best piece of advice from Celeste Gwen, I was asked this last week, was she told me one time, convention should be your hardest working week. And I say that to all of you, you might not be a diamond, but you're there to work because you're there to build culture. If you have one teammate with you, you want them to meet every single, as many people as possible and get their pictures with at, at convention. So um, summer squads, summer squads, is, well, I think that was our new name to the dynamic duos. We're, we keep trying to reinvent it. Summer squads create lifelong friendships. So I love that you added that. So does that answer your question, Andrea, of just ways we are just always trying to connect women who can do life together? Yeah, I think it started out as uh, a lot of traveling around. Um, mo most of Julia's team was kind of rooted in the state of Alabama. So I would say most of her people at the beginning, the first few years were in Alabama. And obviously it's kind of, it's obviously spread out huge. I mean, it's international at this point, but um, she's huge Canadian teams, all kinds of things. But I would say core leadership wise and like kind of like your beginning it was all that you, I mean, I came to Alabama one time and I think we hit like four or five different cities, like on an Alabama tour and all the way you know, ended in Atlanta. And I just think that was so key is that you were willing to show up. You were willing to say, you know, I'm, I mean, we drug kids all the way, you know, all across the state, you know, sleeping in, you know, friends, you know, but back, back bedrooms and whatever, trying to get that done. So if you're thinking, I don't have the ability to do big retreats, I want you to know that Julia started by just showing up. Mm -hmm. Like she was just willing to show up face to face, belly to belly with as many people meetings in school, uh, school, you know, auditoriums, lots of restaurants. Um, I mean, at one point we were at an Italian restaurant in Auburn maybe. And people were sitting on the floor. Like the manager kept coming by going, I think we're against fire code. And we're like, we're, we're almost done. Like we just gotten started, but we're almost done. Um, and I think it was being willing to show up, um, wherever. Um, and, but Jules, what would you say? Cause some people are going, I don't have enough people to even fill out a room at a Italian restaurant to, to be against fire code. What part of your, like, what strategy, what intentional action item have you done over the last 10 years that has actually filled up, you know, rooms and houses and, you know, conventions and trips and all of those things? What are the actual action items that like when you're working your business all the way to diamond and then, um, along with the star diamond program, we also have something called a re-entry program where you get all the way to the very top of the company a little bit over, and they let you sign yourself up and you, uh, almost do the exact same thing all over again. Julia's already at senior Ruby on that, what we call a re-entry position. So on her second position, um, what would you say you're still doing now? Cause you're still trying to grow that position to Emerald and beyond. What are still the action items that you are doing with your own business to create that, that movement and momentum in, you know, in points and pay. Okay. I feel like y'all want like some earth shattering answer but the answer is honestly just staying present um andrea is right beginning it was driving all over the southeast to do dinners but right now that's not realistic with five kids and sports and everything so it's we have a monday night call i show up i don't show up with my camera off i don't show up and stay quiet i show up and and it might look different for you you might be holding the baby and like 8 30 calls is not the way i can show up we'll find a way you can show up for your team 
I am constantly part of my, my new system. I didn't tell you about this. Like I, I coaching calls and you don't have to call them coaching calls. You might be like, I don't know, three-way calls, three-way messages. I'll tell you that has been a standard for 10 years is getting every single person that you bring into this business connected with someone else for that third party and that community. Um, it's kind of going back. I mean, it is, we are team. we still lean on our, our, our team page. We lead on a customer page. Um, something we uh, is events. I mean, everything we, you know, we have such a gift that we can do everything online now. Now, you have to be a little bit more intentional to make sure it stays personal. There has to be a follow-up. Y'all know, I, think, I mean, you're on Andrea's call team if you're on here. So I'm like trusting that you're inviting people to Sunday nights. That's not enough. It's great. We're doing it. Invite those people. But what are you, how are you building that community and that culture after Sunday night? How are you getting them in? Yes, you're putting them in a the chat. That's great. But are you personally calling them? Are you personally saying, I was just talking to someone this morning saying, are you t calling them personally and saying, this is why you would be good at this? Or this is why I'm glad you're on my team. This is what you bring into our in, into our team um, and giving them that. So I think 10 years later, the common thread is just staying present and not making sure you're not hiding behind a screen to everybody. And I am not perfect. I need to say that. I have too many teammates on here. I is something I, like I said, I came up with a new strategy because I want to do better this year because I think that's key. And how detailed do you get on the, on the science of the products whenever you're showing up? You know, Y'all, I'm 10 years in and I still don't know what those strains are in that probiotic. Like I couldn't name one. So I, I don't, and it's not because I don't love the products, but guess what? We have videos and we have, I just go to boards and I send things all day long and I just and, and that's what I am um because I still think even if you get somebody not having migraines and losing 20 pounds if you don't build a relationship with them they're gonna eventually fall off still I mean they just are I mean I've seen it time and time again even um I, I mean we talked about this on our treat they people stay for products paychecks and I don't remember what the third one was but um mm -hmm that it typically takes all three for them to stay. So. Oh, I, one last thing. And then Beck, if you have any questions, anything, you'll, uh, I'd love for you to just touch on what Plexus has done with your family and in specifics, uh, Reese being a part of your family and what, like what it would look like. I mean, God is sovereign and he can do whatever he wanted to do, but the, the, the story just this, the short story of, of what that has kind of looked like for your family. Yeah. Um, and I think this is so important. I actually sent this to Rebecca Williams when my diamonds, I saw in my six year pop-up, she got to quit her job. And I think we're so quick to forget where the Lord brings us in our story. Cause I was like, Oh my goodness, six years ago, you got to quit your job. Like who would have thought what would come after that? Um, and, and the same thing with me, like I joined for a thousand dollars so I could stay home with my kids um, and obviously it, our, our team, I mean, flourished and we were able to pay our bills. Let's just start there. We were able to start paying our bills every month. And then slowly we were able to buy a home, our, our dream home. We bought our dream home and it, it was wonderful. I miss it. Not gonna lie. I am in a closet cause I don't have an office. Um, <laughs> and, but then after that, you know, we always had a heart for adoption and never really thought that was in our cards. And I used to, honestly, I'm going to keep it short, but I used to struggle with like, why did God put this desire in our heart, but we were never going to adopt. Like, so I would just buy all the t-shirts and the bracelets and the necklaces my friends would sell for their adoptions to fund their adoptions. But then, um, I guess we were probably six years into put nah, four years into plexus and the Lord laid it on our heart again. And we realized like we were in a financial place that we could pursue adoption and not even have to worry about the fundraising, nothing wrong with the fundraising, but, um, and Reese's, so Reese is our first fifth child, if y'all don't know, and he is five years old and we adopted him at birth and just the blessing, like to the team, like that was the year for some reason, Plexus decided to give us gift cards instead of a shopping spree. And we got $10,000 in gift cards, which is insane. And so I literally had planned a trip to go snow skiing in Utah. We got 
match with a birth mom in Utah. Like I couldn't make the story up if I wanted to. And because of Plexus, I was able to fly all four kids and my parents to Utah to see their baby brother. Like just how the Lord's hand and his provision has was every step of Reese. And honestly, just giving my husband the fi- the freedom to be like, he's in there with him right now. Reese only goes to half day preschool. So he's in there um, of just taking care of his needs. So that's a very short version of. Yeah, just- it's, the, it's the short version, but I think what it is, is, is getting to see God use something that you were like, never, never, never will I ever. And then like, okay, well maybe, but just a little, like I'll just dip my toe in for the thousand dollars that we need because, you know, Jared's kind of in between jobs. And so I don't have to go back to work in case y'all don't know. Julia has the ability to be a teacher. Um, if she so desires, which I have, she a, I have a degree, I don't know about the ability. <laughs> <laughs> the, the state of Florida might let her have a teaching job if she wanted one, but um, just that desire to stay home. Um, if you, to know her is to know that her job as a mom is so important. So primary being there for everything. Um, and so I just think if you know people in your life, I hope you've been writing down names this entire time that we've been talking, because there is somebody out there who you don't think needs the money, but does, you don't, you don't know their finances, but maybe you go to dinner with them and you realize that you've over, you've overshot on what the dinner might cost based on what they have, which Joe and I did with Julia and Jared early on, we took them to dinner and they were like, man, this is our entire budget. Um, we need to again, tell that. I, I feel like I need to tell that she took us to sushi and a really expensive sushi place before doing plexus. And then we couldn't buy groceries for a week because we spent our whole grocery money at the sushi place. But anyway. but I had been telling her about plexus for six months at that point. So really it was her fault for waiting for so long. Um, and, and I think even that, like, who are you like irritated with? Cause they haven't joined you net yet. I never remember being irritated with Julia. I never, I remember being frustrated for her that like we could, that this could fill that gap. But I mean, up until, I mean, literally the moment that she caught the vision, we were still just doing normal life stuff. Um, and I just think like, where are you not showing up? So anyways, I just, I want, I hope that the entire time we've been talking that you heard Julia's heart, you've heard her story that you've gone, okay, maybe this is for so-and-so. Um, and, and, and at the end of the day that you keep showing up, that even if you've messaged them and said, Hey, do you want this? And they're like, no, that you continuously showing up on social media in person, belly to belly and all of your social situations, not about plexus, but for them is so important. So are there any questions back? Did we miss anything that you thought we should have covered as well? No, I know we've had a couple uh, questions from the chat that maybe, um, Jules, I just think it's good sometimes for everyone to hear people outside of Andrea and I, but um, Ivy, we've got two questions about customers. And honestly, Julia, you have always had really good customer care. Um, Ivy says, I can add customers, but I struggle so much getting them to use the referral link just to cover their own products. What do you suggest? How do you, I know you've, you've been working on a good onboarding system. What's your um, technique to get people to actually start to share their referral links? Okay. So this is hard to put in in a actual strategy because again, it's just my personality, but to me, and, and I have had, I'll just say, I had a really good success rate, especially in 2023 of getting my customers to share their referral link. A, I love that verbiage. Oh, you have a referral, referral link you can share because referral links are such a hot item right now. But um, I, mean, I would say, when you, first of all, you got to be talking to your customers. So that's another reason. That's why I kind of came up with a better, more um, organized system to talk to everybody. Because I'm like, if you're not talking to your customers, you're not going to know that they're... I don't know, they lost five pounds and their migraine's gone. Okay, so I it's a simple thing. I'm like, oh, that sounds like a good post. Like, I think I use that phrase, like, I don't know how many times a week when I hear people, that sounds like a good post. That sounds like a good post. And eventually it wears them down, guys. Like, it, it really does. And I'm like, if you just throw that out there, someone's going to ask you about it. Um, an- Another thing, and I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this and we're just anyway, we're doing more and more of them is a lot of customers do not want to post, but they will allow you, especially if they're having good results with their products. Hey, if I had set up a messenger event for you, 
February. I love themes. I love Plexus. Hey, for Valentine's Day, I'm going to have some I Love Plexus events. I'm going to do all the work. Would you just invite your people to it? You don't have to do anything. And we'll I'll even get them set up with your referral link so you make some, some money. If you share a referral link three times, you make like 300 bucks. I never say the specific amount of money. Um, but does that make sense? Like, it's not a one conversation and done. It's every month. Um, and something else I, I, I share, I learned this out of mistake of people who were not interested in the business. I was never, you know, after a few years, you kind of stop talking to them. But I had a friend ask me. So at the beginning of every month for my level ones mainly, um, I send them like a, hey, happy February. This is what's going on. You know, free bag of slim. Here's the code. If you have anybody that wants to use referral link. Oh yeah. If you share it three times, you make $300. That's it. Like I'm not pressuring, but eventually like it, I've been really surprised of customers who've been mine for like five years who are like, okay, I'm going to share my referral link. This, you know, they start talking to their aunt or their cousin or whatever. So um, that was a few of just like real life, how my conversations with people go. Um, of just keep sprinkling it in just every single month. Make sure they know how much they can make if they share that referral link. Um, I think it's good too. Like you talk, you've encouraged me just to be texting people. Um, you know, it was back in 2014, 2015, 16, we'd add someone to our team page and they would see the stuff from our team pages. And now you guys know that Facebook especially has become like a crowded, cluttery place. So sometimes even just our leaders aren't seeing um, team posts, which is why I think when Julia says that she is talking, like I, I wrote that down, she talked to her sponsor every day. Are you talking to even your customers on a regular, at least weekly, if not daily basis? Um, and then Jules, you have an amazing virtual assistant, but you did not always have her. Erin asked before you had your VA, how, how did you manage keeping up with all your customers? Um, okay. For I'm laughing at people think I'm a good customer care because I feel like that's probably not one of my strengths. Um, I'm good at keeping up with people. Um, but yes, so it has changed every year. And I think that's the thing. 10 years in, it's going to change. I just say you, and I shared this with our retreat last week, You've got to have a system. Just pick a system. I don't care what system it is. Pick something, stick with it for several months. You can't pick one month and decide it doesn't work. But like, I mean, I remember at the beginning I had, Aaron, I had a box like with index cards and y'all index cards are hard to find. FYI. But um, and every customer had an index card and like I would go through it. I don't know. It was like a Rolodex, you know? Um, I have gone right now. 2024, which I did have a VA, but you know, I still project broadcast. Anyway, I have a love hate relationship. I have a book and everybody has like, like literally I, they, you, your name is at the top and I write down. Um, that is why I'm coming up with a kind of a new system. I'll share it with y'all if it's good. Um, notebooks. I'm a, I'm a handwritten girl though. I know people who do calendars, the dollar section and target. I've done that where you bought a cheap calendar and you wrote down their names when you check in on them. I mean, again, I really just think it's figure out something and talk to them every, every month. And because when I don't write it down, guess why I don't talk to them. And that's happened. I mean, I am here to say I have failed at that. When I don't write it, if I, when I don't have a system, guess what? I lose customers, period. Um, and don't be scared because someone pushing back their subscription is better than them getting mad that it came to them and they didn't want it to come through. And I think that's a true like mindset thing that people are like, oh, I don't want to check on her. She's happy. I don't want her to push back her subscription. I need her six points. No, you don't. You want a growing, thriving team for years to come. You don't want six points this month and then her turn off forever. So this says, do people have to sign up when you send them the referral link to earn the money when sharing the referral link? Yes. So you get, I'm asking, I guess she's asking. Yes, you have to, they have to purchase for you to get that 20% off their first purchase and for you to rank up. I feel like I should have like a really good last question and I don't have a great, like, let's end on this note. I feel like my team should ask me a question that they don't know. Cause I feel like this is a repeat of everything you already know. Oh. 
do VIPs get a better discount with a subscription than without? It does not change their pricing. However, we do have a perks program. So with every subscription that goes through, they get perks points, which equal free products. So that's like a whole nother training is perks. But that is a great way to talk to another touching point for your customers of, hey, if you set up a subscription, you can earn free products and it keeps them consistent and they have better results. Oh, and Tina Marie, look, she's like our Plugel. If you don't know Tina Marie, we call her Plugel because she's like the Plexus Google. You get $6.99 shipping on subs and $8.99 on where to go regular order. So you do save $2 in shipping if you have a sub. I forget things like that. <laughs> well, that's new too. So it's kind of hard to forget unless you're a Tina Marie, at which point you remember <laughs> everything. Um, Jules, thanks for taking your time out. I know that you feel like Everyone has heard so much of your story, but I want uh, you to know there are people on here that have never heard any part of your story um, that now get to fall in love with you and follow you and um, see your life unfold. I think one thing you have done really well, and I know you'll always say that you um, could do it better, but is that you share your life. Like we know what's happening with Reese. We know what sport Roman's playing. We know what, you know, I feel like I know what skincare Lottie's into at all times. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, or what, you know, the big girls are doing. And and I just think like you do a good job of sharing life. Um, the, you know, the fun, the silly, the messy um, with everyone. And I think like looking back over the last 10 years, that's what's really encouraged people to want to be a part of whatever it is that you're doing is that they have seen, um, they have seen, you know, trips to private islands, but they have also seen, um, you know, the moves that y'all have gotten to make and what God has done, you know, with the different locations that y'all have been at and all of that. So I think that you have actually shared your life really, really well. You've shared what God, you know, the story that God's written through, um, through your obedience. And I think, you know, he's allowed Plexus to be successful so that you can continue to do the things that he's called you to do, um, well, and we get to bring other people along the journey. I think that's one of the most incredible things that I think we'll always look back and be amazed by is like me being obedient and a little annoying and all of the other things with Plexus like sparked a fire in you. And when that, when, when you ran off and, and took that fire to, you know, Alabama and everywhere else, it, it changed the lives of other people. You know, Rebecca got her kitchen, but you know, L Rob got her, you know, different things and bringing in everybody else. So I just think like, it's, it's a being willing to be that vessel for the ripple effect. Like, are you willing to continue to throw that pebble in the water every single day and figure out what your ripple effect does? And you have ripple affected so many people's lives. Um, like, you know, we won't know until we get to heaven, how much God has used our obedience through this to, to change the lives of other people. So I thank you for that. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for doing this and then showing up again tonight for your team, for a training call. They are blessed to have you. Thank you, friend. Thank you very much. Bye y'all.